the 2020 novice class, we changed it up a little bit this year. The sandbox novice class is going to have a fuller shoe with the plain stamp shoe. So you have to make, on one day you make a front fuller shoe and a plain stamp high. And then on the next day, you'll have to make a plain stamp front and a fuller high. It's important because there's certain things that change up. Now you no longer have to not worry about just making a pair, but you have to actually make the side of the shoe that's being made that day. And you need to make, remember if you're making a front or a hind. Today, we're just gonna do a, a quick demo on making a three quarter fullered shoe. You need to have, the toe section needs to be bumped. And the reason you bump it is because you're gonna shift all of your material from the inside edge to the outside edge so it's user friendly for the foot. If you don't have enough uh, material in the toe, your toenails usually set up the breadth of stock for your, your toe. So in between your toenails, this is the amount of steel you have. A 13 and a half inch foot is right on the bubble to where if you don't bump it, it's gonna look spindly and long. And, and the mistake a lot of people who are just getting into shoemaking make is that as soon as you pinch up the stock, it accelerates in growth lengthwise. But as long as you keep a good breadth of stock or a width of stock, it doesn't accelerate and grow so fast the lengthwise goes. So we're gonna maintain that. And then we want the breadth of stock, there's kind of a, a compound equation here. You have to have the right breadth of stock for the size foot you got, and then you have to divide the nail hole down the center of stock, because that's the easiest formula to have. So if you make a shoe that gets too long too big, then the nail holes get fine, and they're not halfway down the center of stock, which means that you have an inappropriate shoe for the shoe you're making. We've got a piece of uh, 13 and a half inches long, and we're gonna go about 3 16 of an inch off center. So that gives us just a, a tad bit more material on the outside, about uh, almost 3 eighths of an inch more material on the outside and we'll bump the center third. We wanna make sure our bump overlaps our toenail because we'll be doing a lot of forging around that toenail, so we wanna have some expendable material to get rid of. So we, we've got the bump, we've got about a third, a third, a third, and we're just trying to get material in there That we can overlap into the heat into the fullering part of our shoe. So we want to have it go past where our fullering mark is going to be. I got a noticeable change in there. Now we'll do the toe bend. Got the toe bend. You can see the center punch dot. I'm going to work from this side. I'm letting the anvil take most of the beating. I come up here, it's already bent way more than it was on the anvil. So I'm gonna start over again and get this back right in there. Now I'll take, and I'm pushing this through and I'm staying just off, just off the horn so that I can, I can start bending it past the 90 and I don't get any whiplash, get any whip going the other direction. So I start here and start working it down. I'm not pinching it on the anvil. Same thing, push it through. All right, you can see I have, it's more bend here than here, it's a little straighter, so I'll just, when I come, I'm gonna pull with the hammer, I'm hitting flat, and I'm gonna get more arc there. I've got so much material on the inside edge, I'm gonna start on the ground surface and I'm gonna flatten it up. Just come across and flatten everything up. Then I'll flip it over and I'll work from where imaginary, imagining where toenail to toenail.
you can see I got the width. I'm at a little bit over about inch and five eighths for my toenails to almost an inch and three quarter. So now I don't want to have my fuller in the center stock because where it comes out and where the nail hole comes out will be way coarse. Since the fuller is straight on the inside and has a pitch on the outside, I want to start slightly outside the center to where I come to center after the fuller dives in a little bit just from the way it's going to push away from material. You can see the mark is outside of center, but I'm trying to pre predict where it's going to go down into the center, to the other side, where my nail hole exit is going to come out. All right, to make a heel, more upsetting blows. If you pick up, it'll change the shape of your shoe. So I'm trying to keep the back edge closest to the tongs, flat against the anvil, and pinching back there, and going past the center of stock. Do the same thing on this side. You can see I've completely covered up the fish mouth and I have plenty of thickness. So now I've upset it enough to where I can flatten it. And redo the whole process again. I just keep on going past everything over and over. The thing you don't want to do is get a long check because then to cover up your buttress and to cover up the, to get it to cover the tip of the buttress, you have to fit with a lot of length. So we have it round and then I can fudge a little bit in this area where my heel fits and it need be rasp up the heel to fit perfect. We're pushing down with our tongs. It's very important to be pushing. You see the angle is gonna be the exact opposite of the way I'm hitting up here. I'm pushing down. Once I get it to start bending, then I take, I choke and take another piece and I keep on pushing underneath. Take another bite. Take another bite and bring it on around. And we have Half a shoe. Again, I'll just flatten it up. Is when it's, do not be afraid to go hit and then pin it, grab with your tongs, hit, hit, grab with your tongs and keep pushing it under. If you allow the shoe to pull you over the top, what it does is it just kinks it around and it hooks your heel in. I'm trying to make my shape without my heel being hooked in and I have a nice radius. The difference in the two is when I'm pushing in on the tongs, I'm using the back half of the horn to push it around. Whenever I, I become sloppy with my tongs and allow it to be pinned, it just kinks and bends it around the front side of the horn. So now we're gonna ham it. I take my hammer, and I just want one point of contact and I'm just thickening up the outside edge because the outside edge is gonna fall off. So we're hitting it at an angle, trying to keep the base of the material flat against the horn so I don't get it tweaked. And now you can see I have somewhat of a height right here, a peak right here. And that's gonna give me material that'll fall off because my fuller is gonna push it down and out. Slightly outside of center. Just get it in there. Now I'm ready to drop it in. 
All right, I'm gonna drop the fullerene in. I'm gonna graduate down into, I get to my heel nail and then I start being even. I want it to be a parallel right to my heel nail. Get to the heel nail and then try and get it all in there evenly. Now I just kind of push it out where I think that I've got some irregulars, ir, ir, irregularities. Come off the toe a little bit so you can get your crease nail pullers in there. And then what I'm gonna do, I line up this mark, this mark, and then the widest part of my, the box works as the widest part of my shoe. Split the difference. Now what I'll do is come in here. Get a little boxing. I have the heel nail here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm cleaning up that back edge and I'm getting these big old bumps out of the toe. Go right through the toe clip. And then I find the heel nail again and I move away from it this direction. What that does is I have the arc going away from the heel nail the same as the arc going away from the heel nail going into the toe. All right, we have half a shoe. You line up your fuller and marks, and then you dissect your toenail. And we're on to go to the medial side. The medial heel, I'm gonna try and imagine where the heel nail is, and I'm gonna angle and safe right on through to the outside, and that'll make safing, and it makes it safer for the opposing limb. So, start here go all the way through at an angle. My, my hammer's pitched at an angle and come around the outside. And then finish off the inside. Flatten everything up and repeat the whole process until you get the desired look. But I'm trying to keep that check as short as possible. All right, so this edge is my safing edge. I'm gonna hold it at an angle, and I remember my heel nail's right here. So I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna hit with the hammer, that inside edge, and what that does is it puts a nice clean line on the outside and gives me nice safing. All right, pushing with my tongs. I'm trying to push my tongs underneath the horn and I'm hitting slightly off the horn. As soon as I get it to start going the way I want, grab another bite and come on around. Grab another bite, come on around and just swing it up over the top. I got the other half of the shoe. So, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna find where my fullerene is and I'm gonna start Hemming up where the fullerene is. Go past the widest part, go over the top, and then bring it on around. One more time. Go up over the top where the heel nail is, and then swing it on around. The line moves every once in a while from when you hem it and you bend the shoe. I'm just gonna, I want it to be just a little, a frass coarser. And so I just marked it in just a little bit. Just follow my line around.
and then just get it in there. Marking it out, just get to come around and then ease it on out after the heel nail. Everything is function right up until right about now and then it's just aesthetics. We're just easing it out to make it look nice. We'll just come slightly off of the toe, give yourself some room to get some crease nail pullers in there, and then line up toenails, come out, that's the widest part, toenail, go toenails, widest part, boom. And then split the difference. I locate the heel nail, and now I'm just gonna follow the horn and go over the top. Then I locate the heel nail and just create the arc going the other direction. Again. And you can feel some bumping and grinding right in here. That's because it's not a good shape. And the horn is trying to help you and tell you that by fixing your problems. All right, clean up heat. To clean up heat, I want to clean up on the back of the horn and I want my shoe to be open. You always want to clean everything up with flow and openness. It's hard to pair up shoes when you're kinking and always tightening up your circumference. So I'm going to go from fuller, flip it around to fuller. I've been opening it. All right. Now I'll go from heel nail, heel nail, and I'm opening all the way past the toe clip. Heel nail, and I'm opening. And then I'll do the other side. Come back, heel nail, and go right on through the toe, opening the whole time. And then heel nail, and fixing that branch. Now I have a nice open elliptical shape to where it's way easier to fix this shoe by just kind of closing it up now and having a nice open elliptical shape because once you start getting on the horn and kinking and bending it's hard to make pairs but if you make open elliptical shapes when you pair them up, they're easier to make pairs and surprisingly, open elliptical shapes are easier to make the bends fit the horse's foot that you're trying to get it to go on to. So now we've got the shoe, we've got the toe that's not racked one way or the other. We've got the widest part at our heel nail and we've got the arc going into the heel nail, the same as coming out of the heel nail. And now we'll bob punch the toe clip. All right, I have it, uh, I'm gonna just, uh, right where I got some material to be on the outside. So now I hang it over the. This gives me my lip to start it on. I've got plenty of material to start that on. Just take the round side of the anvil, a soft corner, and I'm going to try and come straight back into it. Now I got me a really good lip, and I'm ready to draw my clip. Stay at the base. Just be patient. Come back and revisit the base. Then you want to come in here. And since I've got a pyramid, I want to get as close to that one corner as possible. 
and then get this corner and then come back with the heel of your hammer and clean up right behind the base this makes for a nice smooth section a nice transition in your toe clip then back on the horn just kind of set your clip as you're getting a nice radius in your toe repeat the process nice radius and set your toe clip got a nice toe clip and a nice radius all right this is the front bullard for the novice and it's a fun shoe to make it's practical and you can stock your truck with it i think that you'll not learn anything like you will if you nail them on immediately like if you make them in your shop nail them on the next day and you'd be surprised the improvements you'll make in these shoes you're forging you're fitting you're trimming so if you like this video please subscribe to our youtube channel or facebook or instagram worldchampionshipblacksmiths.com really thank you